Previously on last week's episode of Chef Don Don and Friends with my special guest, the real estate insider. I would have been on. So, why are you in my business? You know, I said, what the hell I want to get out of my phone. Uh, you had your text on uh, uh, the, the phone on 85 hours. Yeah. You had, so, you know. In the opening weekend, y'all. In the opening weekend. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. everybody welcome 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 uh listen we are here for episode two a hot topic for chef don don and friends and of course i got got it by nature tv with me y'all i mean how could you have a sh- hot topics with chef don don and friends and i'm not on it like it really wouldn't make any sense i know i brought this up to you like months ago you did and i'm just not getting to it okay you are <laughs> <laughs> but we here, we here. <laughs> okay. This one's gonna be a little bit different. Um, the first one was dope, but this one is pretty much kind of uh, reality TV based. So we're just about to talk about some things and see how you feel about some stuff. Okay. All right. <laughs> You know the uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta ratings been in the news. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, last you week You know why I'm rolling my. You know why I'm rolling my eyes. Because, like, these people are acting like the world is about to end. And all these Twitter think pieces I see every damn day about this show is crazy to me. I ain't never seen so many people that want one show to be canceled before a day in my life. Like, I've never seen it. Ever. Yeah, I don't agree with the with the cancellation of it at all. Like, and most of the think pieces that people are thinking are never going to happen. Ever. <sighs> I wish they would let it go. Yeah. So the cast was allegedly scared. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that they were gonna lose their job. Well, what I was scared about, what I was scared about. But here's the thing with that. I don't really feel like they were scared. Now I talked about it on my channel. Um, I don't remember exactly what I said about it, but I don't believe that they're really afraid of losing their job because there's been many other shows on this network that get even lower ratings than them and they're still there. Like the Salt Lake Girls, don't nobody watch them and ain't they on season four now? So, I mean, I'm just trying to, Orange County, they've been flopping for years but yet they're back um what like what do you, what do you mean like the show been on for 15 years and it's going through a phase where it may be time for us to usher out the older ones that that's been there for a long time and just 
put it into overdrive and put in the new atlanta say for instance the real housewives of atlanta the new atlanta like usher in a new generation of housewives and you know i did do commentary on carlos king's latest video that he did when he was talking when him and his girl jasmine was talking about a possible rhoa reboot and they were saying that um if they do want to go into a different direction they can cut everybody and leave drew as the anchor and then cast a lot of younger females around her because they did say in the video that when drew was casted that was when they were all talking about going for a more younger demographic they wanted drew to be casted right there with eva and latoya as people that was alongside her and i think that that would have been a good combination that's why it didn't make any sense the first season when drew was on the show and that she was up there amongst all these other people and it didn't make any sense for her to be there. You know what I mean? Because she was supposed to be casted with the likes of Latoya and Eva, possibly Portia. Like I could see that. Like if like if they want if they want to go into a different generation, they could do that. They could either have Drew as the person to hold down the fort or I know it may be surprising to hear me say this because I'm against bringing back older people, but the only person that's from the past cast that I would not have an issue with them bringing back would be Portia. That is the only one. And I don't even like her like that, but she the only one that I would be okay with. If they want to usher in a different generation, a new generation, she could be the anchor, her and Drew, because they're, they're friends. I do agree with that. Yeah, her and Drew. Latoya, because I felt like she I didn't like Latoya, but I felt like she didn't really get a fair chance. You know, have Latoya and Eva up there, you know, probably if her husband allows her to, Shamia can be on the cast. There's a lot of people. I know you don't like Shamia. Shamia, maybe like a Shamari or somebody. You know. I'll take Shamari. I'll take yeah. Shamia and why you don't like Shamia? Why y'all don't like Shamia? Please tell me why y'all don't like Shamia. I like Shamia. I have no problem with Shamia. Okay, now let me let me just keep it all the way 100. It's not that I have an issue with Shamia, right? I just feel like she would do so dope without Portia. I, 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 I think if she was on her own, we would see more of Shamia, right? But I ain't gonna lie, Shamia do look like a good time if she was, like if we was ass kicking it, Shamia look like she a good time. No lie. But I do feel like she'll do better without Portia. Without Portia? Yes. Well, you know, she did read Phaedra, you know, the one that everybody thinks got so many great reads that she write down on a, on a pen and pad before she go to the reunion and to the confessional. Yeah, her. She did read her down season nine, so I was here for it. <laughs> and she has been offered a peach in the past. That's what people don't realize. People always be trying to say that Shamia thirsty for a peach, but that she's been offered a peach more than one time. She just didn't accept it. Right, right. I believe that. I do believe that. So look, we I got the ratings right here on the side of the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So episode one, they brought in eight hundred and thirty-four thousand. Um, <laughs> episode two, seven hundred and thirty-eight thousand. Uh, episode three, six hundred. I mean, I'm sorry, seven hundred sixty-five thousand. Episode four, six hundred and fifty-seven thousand. And episode five, eight hundred and five thousand. Mm -hmm. So. Why was everybody in such an uproar about last week's breaking when last week was a holiday? Like it, it was it, Memorial it was, Day, right? People out, people's out kicking it, folks going on vacation. Like, but see when you say that, thing? see when you say that, like people were saying it, it was a holiday. Y'all just making excuses. Y'all just making excuses. Why y'all want this show to be over so bad? Why? Because your fave's not on there. Y'all that mad that Nene, Phaedra, and Portia is not there and y'all want to kill the show because them, them motherfuckers ain't on there? I saw somebody say today on Instagram and I key keyed at this. But I seen somebody say on Instagram that the, re the reason why the ratings was up this week was because of Marlo. <laughs> I said Marlo was in the episode the week before, so if that's y'all theory, what what <laughs> what happened last week? They they can never they can never really say anything. Like they say, like even now before we started, 
I made a tweet. I don't know if you seen my tweet yet or not. When I said I, I'm just, I'm having a struggle trying to figure out why anybody would be on Marlo's side this season. And then somebody said, "Cause the show is boring without her." So I responded with, "It's boring with her." Let y'all tell it. It's still boring, and she's there. So I mean, y'all don't know what you're talking about. Y'all, y'all, mm-mm, child, Marlo ain't. She got to go. It's extremely aggravating. Like Marlo's antics are some of the antics that I have not seen in quite some time. I mean, this is loving hip hop mess that you're doing over here. I'm not understanding what you doing. She don't so even know I got that a she question doing. for you. I got a okay. question for you. So I had made a tweet yesterday about this whole shutting the door in my yet space, right? Mm -hmm. I think what people fail to realize is the door that Marlo went through was already propped open. So you know how when you pop a door back far enough, mm -hmm. it's propped open, which means that when you have, when you do that, you have to add force to it. So y'all gonna really sit up here and lie to us, gaslight us. And, and say Marlo didn't try to hit her with the door. That. Yes. Like, girl, bye. <laughs> we saw that. She tried to hit her with that door. And Mayetta should have beat her ass. I, I see. agree. I can't. I can't. I, the, Mayetta, when she was like, the only door to shut is the one that Jesus shut. I was like, baby, it wouldn't be a time that I had to bring Jesus into this. And everybody know I'm a church boy, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Marlo got to go. Like she really needs to go for real. Like so, you wouldn't even want to see Marlo as a as a friend. I don't want to see her at all. She got to go. Like I don't know how I'm gonna get through this season, this entire season with her and her BS antics and this whole thing about holding Candy accountable. And it's like accountable for what? That's what I'm trying to understand. Does Candy show her real life? I'm not, I'm not a huge, huge Candy fan. But one thing I can say is that she has been pretty transparent throughout the show. So I don't, I don't understand what Marlo wants from her. When I see people echo what Marlo say, I find them to be ridiculously slow <laughs> because it's like y'all are only saying this because. Marlo saying this about Candy and for whatever reason all of a sudden it's a Candy hate train because for years it wasn't no Candy hate train for a long time a lot of people liked her but I would say like around season 10 that's when the hate train started and then once Nene left they really started hating her then so now anything somebody say that's that's negative about her they're gonna roll with it now there was a time where they were saying candy was oversharing, but now they're saying she not sharing enough but you got people like Sonya I'm actually Frank. mad at Candy for sharing, sharing so sharing. much. Right, I'm okay. so mad because I feel like it gives them ammunition to go at her the way that they do. And it be making me mad. I be like, Candy. And they be making it seem that. like they want to blame Candy and Kenya for the show not really, you know, festering well. But why is it just their fault? You know, what well, Candy and Kenya supposed to carry the show. No, they not. It's an ensemble cast. Everybody's supposed to pull their weight on the show. Even when I do when I do my panels, everybody carries their weight. It's not one person carrying the whole damn thing. Everybody has to carry their weight. It's an ensemble cast. Everybody got to do their part. So you got Candy and Kinga, but then you got Sheree, who doesn't give us nothing but punk ass Martell. Then we got Sanya, who don't give us nothing but this family stuff that we don't even give a fuck about mm -hmm. and then we got Marlo who ain't doing nothing but manufacturing drama that we definitely don't care about the only thing that's really promising about this season is Drew's divorce which I know we ain't gonna see for a while and you know Candy's whole thing even though we've seen it all before but now it seems like Candy is putting her mama in her place now that's a little bit more interesting Kenya ain't I mean, they're not showing nothing about her divorce. So it's like, you know, it's only so much Candy and Kenya can do on their own. If the uh, if the cast was strong enough, we wouldn't be pointing fingers at them too. Right. Like, it's not that strong. You got your own story. You got to have your own story. And that's mm -hmm. what some of them are lacking. And or they Sanya just don't want to show it. Just and Sanya wasn't interesting until she started beefing with Drew. Drew made Still her interesting. interesting because that's like a manufactured beef. Like, it's a beef you made up in your head, sis. 
You don't really have no beef with Drew. I've, I've been saying that forever. You have no beef with Drew. I'm still trying to figure out what the problem is. There is no problem. She has no beef with Drew. I got really irritated when people tried to make it a big old thing. Well, Drew was um, Drew was saying that she was cloud chasing. Well, it did come up as if she was cloud chasing off of Kenya and Candy. They do have more followers. Come on now, we're not gonna even act like that wasn't the possible thing. So you mad because she called you a clout chaser? That's what it was giving. <laughs> it was giving opportunists. It was giving clout chasing. Like this, just call it what it was. Oh, child. You know, I just I feel like sometimes, sometimes we we do unnecessary stuff. Like it's just manufactured beef. Like also to this season, Sheree and Drew. Please don't tell me you about to make a story out of the fact that Drew said that you confiscated all of the She Bought Sheree stuff. Because she, we already that's know exactly the what she gonna do. We, like, girl, you cannot drag this on for episodes because we don't care. That's exactly what she gonna do because she ain't got nothing else to talk about. That's exactly <sighs> what she's going to do. And you know that's exactly what she's going to do because she ain't got nothing else to talk about. Absolutely <laughs> nothing else. Nothing else. I'll say this too. On this past episode, I feel like this trip that they went on should not have been a cast trip. I feel like they should have just followed Kenya on down there. I don't think if Kenya, if Kenya was alone, the ambulance would have been called and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just how I feel about that. But what I really, um, I guess what I really want to ask you is, what do you predict? <laughs> this is messy. Mm -hmm. What do you predict is going to happen to Sheree and Martell along the Real Housewives of Atlanta? What's your prediction? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I don't see nothing. Oh my God. <laughs> I ain't even. I ain't. <laughs> I ain't even. I ain't even got. I, listen. We all know it's a PR stunt. We 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 understand it. We get that. It, I, I'm over it. I mean, we ain't seen him in no more episodes, but don't mean we ain't gonna see him again. But I was just wondering how far you thought he was gonna be able to go with this. <sighs> how far? Hopefully to hell. I'm just not interested in Sheree and Martell. They don't have any chemistry. On paper, they, they on paper they look like they would be a handsome couple. And yes, I did say handsome. <laughs> but you know, it's it's just not working for me. They 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 then they're both they're both Capricorns. You should not even claim them. Don't do that. They you should not even claim them. But they're both Capricorns. I do not claim them. I do not claim both Capricorns. I don't claim and them. child. Listen, we don't claim them over here in this world, just like we don't claim Marlo over here. <laughs> and she a February one, just like me. Oh, yeah, that is true. Oh. There is, I don't see any trait of Marlo in me, maybe a little bit of Kenya. With the whole picking fights with people and shit, I do that on the daily. But yeah, you, you know, do. You do. Uh, let's not make this about you, you honey. Let's you not make do. this about you. This is about this no, is about no, your no, hot I'm topic. I'm making it about you. I'm making it. This about is about you. your hot you topics, honey. And I'm just agreeing. This, with you. this I'm is just about your hot with you. topics, honey. I'm just agreeing with you. Hot that's topics, it. child. Let's that, go. That's all I'm doing is agreeing with you. I, that's it. That's it. That's it. Next case. Anyway. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right, child. So I gotta ask, I gotta ask, I gotta ask. Well, you know, the leaked basketball wives team came out about a week ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know, I, 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 
I used to watch your old basketball wild review and your God. old, you know, love and hip hop reviews. We'll get into that in a minute. But mm-hmm. um, so what are your thoughts about this new flock cast? I can I could care less. And I'm telling you why. I'm gonna tell you why. Basketball wise. Now that's a show y'all need to ask to get canceled. That's the show y'all need to want to get canceled. Okay. First things first, the last good season that they had was season eight. Even though it was a whole bunch of problematic BS going down with OG, OG carried that show. Okay. And we needed OG to carry that show because Tammy was on her way out. So we needed someone to carry that show. And she was the perfect candidate to go against Evelyn. She gave Evelyn a business. We we haven't seen anybody go toe-to-toe with Evelyn like Tammy. And OG did it like Tammy, but even more so, more than Tammy. She did it better than Tammy, if you ask me. I enjoyed OG. I was the biggest fan of OG. I was rooting for OG. They needed her on that show. I don't care what nobody got to say about her. She ran basketball wise them last them last two the, the se- season seven and eight. She carried that show. She did her due diligence. She did. And after OG left, I knew that the show was gonna die with her. Cause it, like without her being there, I already knew that was gonna happen. And so then Evelyn decides to leave the show when the going gets tough. Then they come back and bring all these one season wonders back, like um British and Duffy and Brooke and you know, I wanted them to bring Brandy back, but then when they brought Brandy back, she got on my fucking nerves. Then, you know, Malaysia left after the going got tough, but she didn't mind bullying, you know, um, Angel Brinks and Angel Love Ooh. and jumping in on the um jumping in with Evelyn and with OG, even even turned on CC and all that other stuff. But now season 10, she get the same damn treatment and she couldn't handle it, so she left the show she wasn't strong enough to deal with it that's why when it came back everybody was feeling sorry for malaysia and i was the only one that was really calling her out on her shit because i'm like how the hell y'all feeling sorry for her but she participated and mm-hmm. in gang ups on other people she participated in the gang up on jennifer she participated in a gang up on og she participated on them ganging up on cc and that was supposed to be her family so it's like y'all are feeling sorry for her because they ganging up on her but she's only getting what she got back and now her punk ass can't take it and she had to leave. So then that season winded up not being good. So now Evelyn want to come back and every time Evelyn leaves the show, she always try to say, well, I want to be in a more positive place and I'm feeling like this and I'm doing this in my life and basketball wives doesn't fit. But when that money get dry, your ass run back to basketball wives every single time. So now they didn't got rid of half the cast. They didn't got rid of Brandy. They didn't got well, Bridge got rid of herself because her ass gonna go to jail. Um, they got rid of Brandy, they got rid of British, they got rid of Duffy left on her own, Malaysia left on her own, and they got rid of Angel Brinks, which I don't know why the hell they brought her back anyway. So that only leaves Jackie and Brooke to stay. And they bring Evelyn back and everybody else knew. I don't care. Like, yeah. because I'm a reality TV connoisseur or whatever you want to say, and I, you know, I do my due diligence on here by talking about reality shows that we all love and know, and mostly black reality shows in the way, of course, because I get paid to commentate on these shows. It makes me want to take a look at it just to see what it gives, but I'm not sure because I stopped reviewing Basketball Wives last season, mid-season. So it's kind of like, I don't know if I really want to give it a shot again. But they are, is kind of like a reboot. So it's I like- I ready to say, I don't know whether to give them grace or whether to, because I will say this, what they're doing is what people have been asking for them to do for a while. Now, is it a little bit too late for Basketball Wives? I think it is. I think a lot of people have checked out. I was just looking at the comments and the blogs and the people were saying, they, why is the show still on? You know what I'm saying? So people thought it was going to be canceled after last season. Um, so I, I just, I'm, I'm over it too. I, I, I tried this past season, even the second half. And then I'm like, you know what? This time I don't even make sense. Y'all filmed this two years ago. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm over it. I don't like no shows that do that, that film. I I mean, you ain't got the film that far. You know what I'm saying? Like two whole years? Y'all had to break this up, refilm stuff. It was just out of whack for season 10. So I wasn't here for it at all. 
Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, it's like, should I give them grace? Because it is kind of a, like a reboot. And the only familiar faces that we got is Jackie, Christy, Evelyn, and Brooke. And everybody else is new. Oh, oh, see, she's so forgettable. I forgot she was even a part of it. Um, but we only know those four, and then the rest of them are new. So it's like, should we go ahead and just let them slide on by and give them a shot? I mean, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, child. We'll even see, though we'll Bell Collective is literally shitting on most of these reality shows that's out right now, but that's another story. That is another story. <laughs> All right, so listen, um, Love and Hip Hop is coming back. And we know Love and Hip Hop to move from VH1 over there to the MTV. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. And I like to to, to say when I'm wrong, right? Me too, because well, I know what you're finna say. I shouldn't speak too fast, but what I was getting ready to say. I know is, what you're finna say. Go ahead. I think them moving over to MTV probably was a good idea compared to what we see now. I, I just like, what? I just knew that the show was, I said, it's already fucked up now. It's really finna be fucked up with it going to MTV. Like, I just knew they wouldn't go know what to do with it. So when that trailer came out yesterday, I was, I was like, bitch, right. this look like the old love and hip hop that I used to review. <laughs> Like what? I said, oh, I'm gonna be tuning every fucking Tuesday. I'm gonna review it. it. Like I'm everybody gonna got a story. It looked like yes. the only person that I'm not here for. I'm I'm tired of hearing the wine. And you might disagree. Rashida. No, her too. But not as much as I'm tired of hearing Erica. Erica Mena. Because she, girl, you you oh. gotta stop acting like you so innocent. You were a part of the breakdown of your marriage too. Why you is she even like there? Man. Like I really feel like this. Erica Mena and Yandy should not be there. They are not Atlanta. They don't need to be there. They need to go ahead, bring Love and Hip Hop New York back and ship their ass back up there. They do not need to be on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. They don't even make sense being on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. They can really go. That I'm gonna be real. You know, when they did season 10, it was in the midst of the whole pandemic. Right. So when they brought when they first brought it back, that's what initially turned me off to Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Cause everybody knows this. If you've been watching me for years, everybody know Love and Hip Hop Atlanta was my shit. Like, you know, um, it was you know, some people watch folks reviews, watch people reviews for certain things, but I know for me back in the day, my housewives reviews would do well. But them love and hip hop and basketball wise views was 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 like those those were my bread and butter love and hip hop and basketball wise that was my bread and butter back then. So everybody knows that that was my shit. Anything love and hip hop I was reviewing it. Love and hip hop New York, Atlanta, Miami, Hollywood I was reviewing it. Anything basketball wise Miami, LA I was reviewing it. Like top to bottom I was never letting it go But season 10 It just did not feel like Love and Hip Hop Atlanta It was just so weird to watch it Everything about it was just weird And I'm like Yandy, be Yandy and Mendeecee being there Does not make me feel like it's Atlanta Erica Mena and Safari being there Does not make me feel like it's Atlanta Them two alone gotta go They gotta go I don't want, I don't want, and I used to like Yandy when she was on New York, but then after a while, I started to see her for the fake person that she really is. But that's besides the point. She can go back up to New York. We don't need her down here in Atlanta. Her and Erica can go. I don't want to sit there and watch a whole season of Erica Mena steady crying about Safari. I don't want to hear about it no more. I am so over that. I'm like, y'all, can y'all stop saying, I get it. He might have stressed her out, but my God, she was just as responsible for their breakdown in their marriage as he was. Stop, mm -hmm. stop doing that. I, I I don't like that. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Y'all make sure y'all tune in on Tuesday, okay? Because I'm, I'm sure definitely you're gonna be doing in. your live review after. Thing. I I'm not sure if it's gonna be live yet. I'm trying to I'm trying to wait and see. Um, if it's it depends on how good it is, because you know only certain shows get lives from me, like. 
All right, so A don't really deserve to get no live right now, but they get it off the strength of it's Housewives of Atlanta. But like stuff like Bell Collective, they ain't getting, that's not getting no live. I love the show, but that's one of my least watched videos is Bell Collective. So it's not I getting no I live. Saw the show yours from last week got some good views. I was surprised, child. I was surprised. I did see that. I did see that. Okay, but uh, okay. but uh, I don't know yet. But it just depends on the first episode is really going to let me know whether or not um, it's going to get alive. And I did propose me, Jam- me, not me, Jamar, me, Josiah, and T doing roasted review for Love and Hip Hop this season. It really oh, just depends on that. It really just depends on the first episode. That would be good. That would be good. Okay. Because okay. we wanted to do it on Bell Collective, but Josiah wasn't back yet. So, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't really want to start. We already started doing Rose Review for Queens of R&B together, but then Josiah had to take a break and we had to do the show with just me and T. So we didn't want to start it off with just me and T again. So we just, you know, so I said maybe we could do it on Love and Hip Hop because it looks good. It, it looks do good. look good, child. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the mess. When I'm I saw Erica Dixon ask Bambi to square up, I Ooh. was sold. I said, yeah! I'm gonna be in the building, honey. That was I'm the be best the part of the that and Erica Banks getting that drink thrown in her face. I don't like Erica Banks. I don't Me. like her. I don't like her. I don't like her. I don't even know why she's even here. Why is she here? Bill Collect. Okay, I'm gonna ask you first. What is? Did you know about the show before it came on the air? No, you did. Okay, no. so when you saw it, what was your what were your thoughts like? What was your thoughts? Okay, but then again, let me also take this into account too. I remember back in 2019, my cousin asked me to go to M Bar one night, and I said, "For what?" He said they're filming a show there. And I think you should cover it for your YouTube. And I said, I don't even know what the fuck the show is or what it's about. Like, why would I go? And I don't even know what this is. And I never went. So a part of me is thinking that when they were filming back in 2019 at Bar, it could have been a pilot for this show. It could have been. But I still didn't know anything about it up until... Latrice posted on Facebook um, the 15 second clip. And when I looked at it, I said, wait a minute, is she gonna be on the show? So that's how I knew about it. Cause Latrice, you know, cause we, everybody knows this already. Latrice, Latrice had posted it on Facebook. So that's how I found out about it. And I was very excited about it. Cause she was the only person I knew. I didn't know nobody else on there. So right. I was like, apparently all these people from Jackson, but I ain't never heard of none of they ass. The only person I, I knew about was Latrice. The only other person I knew about was Tamara. Not because I knew her personally, but because I we have to hear her annoying ass voice on the radio. That's how I knew her. I call her tambourine. And that's exactly how she sounds on the radio. My mama had, like, I remember riding the car with my mom one day. We was going to uh, Jackson or something. And Tamara was on the radio. My mom said, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, we got to change this. I cannot stand here, Tamara Cherie's voice on this radio. We finna change this. Like, imagine being there. We going to the mall during lunchtime, and you hear her. It, it make you lose your appetite. So, I mean, she was the only other person I knew. I knew Latrice personally, but I knew Tamara because she was on the radio. But Marie and Letitia, I didn't know them at all." Or Antoinette. Okay. I didn't know neither one of them. Okay, okay. I keep, I keep forgetting about Antoinette. Okay, so after season one, after you see season one, you what, what was your thoughts of, about the episode? I, you know, I'm from here, so, you know, I, I really want to push that show because, honestly, I remember when I first started doing my panel, the Whether You Like It or Not panel, this was the very first season of it. And it was like nine of us on that panel back then. And I was like pushing everybody. I was like, y'all need to review this show. Y'all need to review this show. I remember telling Bundy and Jamie and all of them, y'all need to review this show. I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I sent it to Color Me Pink um, as well. And I was like, this is a new show that's coming on own. It's about people that's from my city. And I need for you, well, not my city. I'm 30 minutes outside that city, but you, I'm in the metro area, so whatever. But... 
Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want y'all to look at this show. So I was pushing it out there because it's 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 about people that's from here, and I'm from here, so I wanted to see them get some shine. So it's very. And then listening to the reviews and hearing different opinions on people, it's it's kind of hard to listen to it because of Latrice, because I know her outside of this show. So hearing different people's opinions about it is kind of difficult, but I don't get upset about anybody's opinions about her because they can only go about what they see. So, you know, when I first when we first talked about it on your channel that time with Jeremy, I was taken aback at how much vitriol he had for Latrice. And I and it was like, well, you know, I really couldn't say nothing because he only going by what he see on the show, you know. So and I just yeah. And I felt like anything that I would have said to him in response, it would have been, well, you only saying it because you're cool with her. It ain't got nothing to do with it because this season right here, I've been giving it to her ass too. And yeah, I even honey, said we got that we have questions to ask her. Ooh. That's what I said. We and so do. So, Speaking of this season, um, we, we, not we, be they best. <laughs> we three episodes in, <laughs> okay, <laughs> in the second episode air Friday. I mean the fourth episode air Friday. Um... What you think about this Twitter back and forth? Because I, it's gross if you ask me on both ends. It I don't is. Like it it I don't is. Like it. it is. I was gonna text Latrice yesterday and say, "Girl, why are you doing that? You don't even do that. Why are you doing it? Like yeah. y'all been arguing since Friday. Aren't y'all tired of fucking arguing? Y'all been arguing since Friday. Like why are y'all doing this? Like." This ain't even the Latrice that I know. Like, why are you even, like, you ain't even the type of person to argue with nobody on no social media. She ain't never been that person to argue with nobody on social media. So it's weird seeing her go back and forth for days at a time on Twitter. Like, it's, it's, I was what? bothered. And, and, and look, my friend Jeremy, shout out to Jeremy, he made a comment. He's like, but did you see the episode? And I'm like, it's beyond the episode at this point. Like, it's going to be on the episode. Like, That's what it is. Like, like, when the episode, when the season first started, Marie was taking shots at Latrice in those confessionals. She was. As soon as Latrice say something about her, then she take the Twitter and don't shut the fuck up for hours at a time. You know what I mean? So they're both taking shots at each other. They just got to get it over. They, they got to get over themselves. They are nothing but another Nini in Kenya. They are sitting up here arguing with each other. And they want to act like the other one, keep the other one name in their mouth. Y'all both keep each other name in y'all mouth at this point. Yeah, I agree. But the thing I'm not here for either is the exposing of, of, of DV and all of that stuff. Like, I think mm -hmm. that stuff is just going extremely too far. I also think whatever she's saying Latrice is doing, if she's doing it, it's just too far on both ends. And that's just keeping it all the way 100 based off of what we see on social media. Um, right. I just think again that y'all, we don't want to see this show go down and go to like Love and Mary Thompsonville. And I say that because this show is toxic, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like the bells should be going down that route. But it's going there because they, because like it, it's, it's going too far on Twitter and they just won't shut the hell up about it. And I'm definitely going to address that when it's time for Latrice to come on our show. We really don't know when we're going to ask her to come up because we're just in episode three. We're going into episode four. So I don't know when we're going to have her come up, but she's definitely coming up. So is So Gucci. And I'm very disappointed in both So Gucci and Latrice because they're both from my city and they're arguing. And I'm like, why are the Canton girls beefing? Why? Why? And to be honest, okay. I think that I, I gotta be honest. I, this, what, I think Sabuchi is in her feeling. I honestly think she should have handled it better. Yeah, she made her sign a document, okay, mm -hmm. so where she couldn't go anywhere else. Where I gotta call the trees out is if Sabuchi is your girl and your friend, you should have picked up the phone to call her and let her know that you had something else going on too. I feel yeah. like it could have worked both ways. Yes. It should have. And see, but see, the only problem that I got with So Gucci with this whole thing is that, and I don't want it to come across like I am discounting her feelings because I'm not, you know, she had, she got every right to feel how she feels. Right. But if you feel in a way about Latrice, if you don't want to talk to Latrice right away, 
why not talk to Letitia about Latrice? That's actually Latrice's friend. So why not talk to Letitia? Why are you going to the very person that you know can't stand her and have a conversation with her? So that's fake on your end too. Like you going straight to the girl enemy to talk shit about her. Like I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's what I don't that. like. That's what I don't like about it. Like you got an issue with Latrice? Okay, cool. You got every right to have that. But at right. the same time, why are you going to her enemy to talk about that? Well, you could have easily it. went to Letitia. That's her friend. You could have went to Letitia about that and talked to her about it. Because uh, honestly, on the show, Letitia is the one that Latrice is the closest one to. She right. don't talk to the rest of them girls like that. So it's kind of like, if you got a problem with her, you could just went to Letitia, but instead you go to Marie. Why? I would have never went to Marie and yeah. talked about Latrice. That's I agree with that. And can I also say this too? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this may be a reach. This may be a reach. Mm-hmm. But uh, Akisha and So Gucci is giving me fake right now. I do <gasps> not believe for the life of me that they are friends. They are. They I really can vouch are. for that. I can vouch for that because it don't seem like it. It's because when we interview, when we interview So Gucci. She even stated in the interview that they have they had became close by the end of last season. And even after um we did the interview, she even said that so Gucci her her and uh, Keisha was cool because she was the one who was trying to get Akisha to come on our show, but it was too late at that point. But she was the one who was trying to get Akisha to come on our show. So they okay. she do okay. got okay. I, I can't I can't say that she, they ain't lying, they are cool. They are the closest on the show. Okay, okay. And I then probably, my, did I ask you this? But uh, Josh. Okay. Listen, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I hate talking about bill collector because every time I turn around, I gotta make it. I gotta specify that I know these folks and I haven't seen these folks. So let me tell you, last. Not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before last, I was at M Bar, okay, where the incident with Latrice and my husband happened. I was at M Bar for brunch with my friends. So Gucci's son was the DJ, <laughs> and Josh was there. So I was coming. I was outside. I was outside, and then as I was walking up, I said, "Hey, Josh," and we hugged. And he said, I'm so glad to finally see you because we would see each other in passing. But I only knew of him because he was friends with my cousin. So I didn't we don't know each other like that, but we know of each other. And I said, listen, I've been trying to I've been really trying to have your back with this show because I see these people dragging you on social media. And I really be trying to have your back because I I really be trying to have your back because they really make it seem like you and Latrice are not really friends. Y'all just friends for the show. And I know for a fact that y'all really friends. He said, thank you for trying to have my back. And the the girls are not feeling me. They are not feeling me. They drag me every day. I said, I'm trying but I can only do so you much. Know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't necessarily believe that they weren't friends, but I felt like Latrice has to know boundaries. Like you gotta find a boundary because at the end of the day, I get it as your friend. And I get that you would wanna have this conversation, but at least let your friend know like, yo, you in front of my husband, like some stuff you just can't do. It just comes off a little bit disrespectful. I ain't gonna say no little bit disrespectful. It comes off disrespectful. Mm-hmm. And it also comes off as if, you know, you be oh, mad that you gonna tell the business. And I just feel like, again, those, my homie, my friend, I truly believe that they are friends, but there should be some type of boundary there. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, and, and the way that he acts on that show is really the way he act in real life. The way he dresses is the way he dresses in real life. Like, I am so serious. Like, people, I should have took a picture with him so y'all could see it. But okay. I definitely, but I definitely talked to him when I was at Ambar. I definitely talked to him. And shout out yeah, to So Gucci's son, DJ Two Way, playing all my damn songs. And he knew I was drunk as hell and he was playing all my songs. Oh, I, I remember when you was there. I remember that. that. (laughs) Listen, but I, again, I'm hoping, this is what 
Carlos need to do. I, and I'm listen. Carlos makes it super hard to defend him, even if you do like an inch of him. Okay, he makes it super hard to defend him with a lot of things that he do. Mm -hmm. I was he listening do. to someone the other day, and they were saying that they felt like the encore was the only show that he brought that was a good show. And I mean, that still had a few toxic moments. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I feel like, dude, I don't know what you gotta do, but let's not let these shows go down like that because you got something good in Jackson, Mississippi. You had something good in Huntsville. I mean, you ain't got far off from the trajectory of your show in Huntsville. I mean, you got a good DC cast. Yeah, this season. I, I can't, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't hate on the DC cast at all because I did watch. And then like the Detroit cast, I know uh, uh, a couple on there. <laughs> but anyway, so okay. it's gonna be interesting to see, but I really want him to like you need to meet with all these, all your cats and like figure it out, dude. Because it's not working. It's not, it's not working. You making it hard for people to. do But and Bell Collective yeah. is a good ass show, it and is. I feel like he doesn't push it the same way he pushed Love and Mary Transview. He needs to put more into Bell Collective, in my opinion, because it's a good show. Now, one thing I say about Bell Collective that we have seen every year is the production be productioning every year. It gets yes, better every it year. The only thing that I got to say is, Letitia, I do not like your confessional week. It do look like it is hugging your head. And it looked like you can't think. So that's it. But you know, I do like the the new confessional look. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm loving the the camera is is, is a look <laughs> most dirty. You know, like the production level is on point this season. The last thing I want to ask you about concerning mm -hmm. the collective is Letitia and Glendale. Well, you know, Glenn on my mama friend list on Facebook. I had to put that out there first. Um. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh. I got to rewind. I got to rewind. I forgot about something. Wait. So I remember when you had made a post on Twitter about uh, Damon being at the... <laughs> Yeah, I mean at the at, at the, the, at, the, for, the for Jackson State Homecoming. Okay, so when I said that about, I wasn't talking about the tailgate because I wasn't even at the oh, tailgate. Okay, 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 okay. He was he did attend Jackson State's Homecoming. He absolutely did. I didn't go to the tailgate. I went to the block party that they had on Capitol Street. They had a block party in downtown Jackson, and then they had like then they had something in this little building. And I and that was the day. I don't know. You went live that day because I actually came on your live while I was there. I was on my phone though. You were. You I were. Re I don't remember what you were going live for. It was something you went live for. I don't remember, but you and Jeremy was on that live, and I had told y'all that I just saw the mud because I was literally right. He was. I was right here, and he was literally on the side of me. And Tamar was nowhere near him that night. It was just him. He was there with his boys that night. Tamara was not with him. So anybody bringing up that shit about him not being there and all that, I said, yeah, he was here to enter the festivities, but just not with her, at least that night, because I ain't seen him with her that night. <laughs> I will listen. I'm just saying, child. <sighs> bell collector, bell collector, bell collector. It could be so good, but Tamarine, I know you don't like that man, and you just need to go on and tell him that you really don't like him. I, <laughs> I really want you to tell him. Well, listen, that that's pretty much the hot topics. I wanted to keep it reality TV based about what's going on in, in reality TV, what's getting ready to come on. You know what I'm saying? You know, we uh reality TV connoisseurs. Junkies. Um, yes, junkies. And I can't honestly, wait for love and hip hop. I'm so excited. I don't have enough time to really be watching these shows. And I be promising myself I'ma watch them. But see, I I commend you because I don't understand how you can go live after a show. I tried to do that one time for Love and Marriage Huntsville, and it did not work out well. You want to know why? Because I got to watch the episode more than once. Yeah, I used to be the same way 
but I sometimes like to just go ahead and do it live and get it over with, get especially over with. if it's a show that I really enjoy, like Potomac. Like, I know I can go live right after that and, and just get that over with. I can go live at the at Housewives of Atlanta and get it over with. But then there are some shows I'm like, okay, I got to do a pre-record. Like, for Bill Collective, I got to pre-record. Uh, growing Up Hip Hop, which I hope never comes back, I got to do um, a pre-record for that. It's just right. certain shows I don't mind going live for, but then there's other shows that I know I got to pre-record. And I would never pre-record or go live for Love of Mary Transville ever again in life because I would never review it again. Ever. We're done with that show. Be quite honest with you on the show. I'm not a fan of anybody that's on the cast. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a diehard fan for anybody that's on the cast. So, mm -hmm. for me to say that about Marlo, like, you really gotta be just... I ain't had no... <laughs> I ain't been a fan of somebody on the show since Nene left. I'm just keeping all the way book. So, I mean, at this particular point, I don't got no people on the show that I just really don't right. like that. But Marlo, oh, she got to go. I want you to go. I she gonna play victim all the way up to the reunion, child. Oh, God. Like, that's the part I'm not looking forward to is this damn reunion. Oh, do you think Martel's coming to the reunion? I hope not. Mm. I doubt it, though. I think for them to be messy, I think Martell comes to that reunion. You know what? You might be right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, then I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not since all this stuff that came out back here. Maybe they don't want to have nothing to do with that. I don't know. You know, who knows? Who knows? But that yeah. damn producer love, obviously loves some manufactured mess, so he'll probably he bring him he up. Yeah. He does, he does, and it's it's over with at this point. You got called out, they had to go to your Instagram talking about oh, I didn't know this was going on. Shout out to Jeremy for going viral. He did go viral, he did go viral because other content was creators was talking and about it. The people was mad, and I said, What y'all not about to do? It's <laughs> come for my friend. That's what y'all not about to do. Because he called out what y'all refused to call out. Exactly. Well, listen, thank you so much for being on episode two. You know, Jeremy on episode three, child. I knew he and, went too uh, far behind. <laughs> yeah, you're not too far behind. I mean, you know, you know me, you know, when Je when I'm here, Jeremy got to be behind. You know, you know what they say. I ain't going to go there. You know we are we already fighting over you. We already what fighting over each other. That's what they say, y'all fight. That's what they say, y'all fight. <laughs> when I do a whole panel with that boy and <laughs> got that boy phone number, I didn't talk on the phone with that boy. I didn't did, like child. People make up anything. <laughs> it was so fight. crazy. Y'all fighting over me. Y'all fighting over me. I don't know what be going through people's mind. Why they be making up stuff like that? just a make up shit? Like what? Where the fuck did that even come from? Whatever y'all think. Oh, before we leave, this is a web reality show. Chasing Dallas. <laughs> I've been seeing that child. Okay, I, okay. You know what? I'm gonna go on and be honest about it now. Okay. You know, I wasn't feeling Chasing Dallas because I wasn't feeling some of the cast members on it in the past. Um, right now, I don't. Well, I'll say this. <laughs> Since the new production, I'm here for it. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Like That's it. everybody. I, uh, I, I'm I'm here for it. Shout out to Markel. Shout out to Markel. But um, y'all been doing panels on Thursday nights, and I've been here for it. I'm Let me tell you this, because I'm going to tell you this before you close it out, because it wasn't even supposed to be like that. I've been telling everybody that it wasn't even supposed to be no panel. See, the thing of it was, you know, I've been watching Chasing forever. So I had stopped reviewing these weird reality shows because A, it wouldn't get no views when I review it no way. A, that's that's the first part. B, the cast members would get extra fucking sensitive and then want to come in my DMs to try to correct me and stuff. And I was over it. So I said, I'm not reviewing it no more. So Andario came to me and he said, I want you to review Chasing Dallas this evening. Okay, fine. I'll do it for you because you asked me. So T came up with the idea that we all review the first episode on our own page. And then after that, 
we do joint reviews. So it was supposed to just be me, T, and Jamar doing the Chasing Dallas reviews. So one night, Tramiel said he wanted to come up. I said, okay, cool. You know, whatever. You know, Tramiel, me and Jamar's friend, he then came on Boys Night Out before. I'm like, okay, that'll be cool. We work well together. Tramiel came up there. I decided to keep him. So it was just supposed to be me, T, Tramiel, and Jamar. But then one night, um, I had posted a clip from the previous panel, and Carl was laughing at it. You know, Carl and Tramiel are friend, are best friends, and you know, me and Jamar are friends with Carl too. He is so funny. So it was like, okay, Carl, you need to come up one night. He said, I, I've been, I was wondering why I wasn't up there, no way. So I'm like, okay, I'll let you come next week. So then Jeremy had texted me. And he said, now you got me hooked on this show. And now I got some things to say. You know how Jeremy is. Now I got me some things to say. Can I come up next week? And I said, okay. So I wasn't too sure about it at first. Because Jeremy didn't know anyone up there besides me and T. Me and Jamar are friends with Carl and Tramiel and T. T don't really know Carl, but he know Tramiel. But I was like, Jeremy don't know nobody but me and T. He don't really know Jamar. He don't know Carla Tramiel at all. So I don't know how this is going to work. So I let them all. So it was the six of us up there. And I was I was having so much fun. And when I look back at it, I said, mm. I, I said, I don't want to sleep on this. This really might be some. And I really don't want to sleep on it. So I decided to let Carl and Jeremy be permanent. The more we did it, the more people loved it and the more the numbers were going up. So now people that are then the executive producer, Chase Dallas said, I need to come up next week. So he came up the very next week and you know, Jeremy, if he got questions, he going to ask him. So he was asking him all kinds of stuff. And then it, it just became something new and something Cause when you came to me and said you was enjoying, it, I said, "Is it that? Is it that good?" Cause I wasn't even expecting nobody to like it. I like wasn't that. even watching the show at first, to be honest with you. And uh -huh. I, mean, I saw one of the reviews with all of y'all, and I said, "I have to go watch this because you know, I, I being in the city, uh huh, I know of some things and some people, and I'm just gonna leave it at that." And so, um. I said, child, I, I think I had told you this. No, I, I told Jeremy because Jeremy asked me to watch it. Mm -hmm. And I said, child, I am not supposed to watch this show. I, now, I have been watching Atlanta as long as Atlanta has been out, uh -huh. uh, for sure. But Dallas, like I said last season, I had kind of checked out of it. Like it was mm -hmm. So I'm like, OK, let me go look. Let me go look. I'm going, I'm episode one. Before I look, I was at episode five, and then I'm at episode. I'm like, <laughs> so I really have been watching this entire series. So yeah, I've been I've been watching the review. I, I enjoy it. Well, we're well. We said when Chasing Atlanta comes back in September, we're gonna keep the same cast for the panel. We're gonna do a panel on that too. So it's solidified now. This is a thing, and I can't believe that it's a fucking thing. <laughs> hey, I'm here for it because this. It, I'm definitely here for Atlanta because I, I I'm an OG with that one. I don't oh, you've been watching that one since season one. Oh, Woo! God, yeah. So I'm I'm here for it. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I had watched a couple of episodes of LA. And I listen. Shout out to Quentin. I, I love Quentin, but I I couldn't do. Uh -uh, I don't two. like it. Like <laughs> there is somebody on. There is actually two people on there. Three people on there <laughs> that I just cannot rock with at all. And so it kind of turned me off. But I might give them a try if they come. I out. I, I I was really finna call some names of who I think you may be talking about, but I ain't gonna do it. You might be cast me one, and I might be able to tell you your yeah, name. Nicole. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I knew. I knew she was at least one of them. I knew it. <laughs> I'll be watching on these YouTube streets, and let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> If I had a wig on, every one of my baby hairs would be snatched and plucked. <laughs> literally watching her. She. Oh my god. I don't know what it is, but I, oh, 
I do know what it is. That girl is always constantly a mess. I'm going to just keep it a book. I already knew that. I'm going to just keep it a book. She always is a mess. But, yeah. Anyway, listen. Uh, again, thank you for doing this second episode with me. Um, You know. Of course. You know and I appreciate it. Um, Tell your people, you know. I would definitely tell them that. I'm going to make well, sure to post the you, link when it comes out. You do know I'll give you a sneak peek little trailer or whatever that you can play during your show or when it's okay. live again or whatever the case may be. Um, and then you can tell your people and this will premiere on Friday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Child. I surely will. All right. Thank you, Scotty by the Nation. <laughs> I hate Miss Wanda for this, for this. I hate her for this. Cause she not gonna, I'm not gonna never let you live it down. Oh, well listen, that was episode two of Hot Topics with Chef Don Don and friends in my guest, Scotty by Nature TV. Listen, y'all gotta make sure y'all tune in every Friday for the show. It's gonna be a different guest on every week, okay? A different guest on every week. And we're going to talk about a heaping of different topics. All right. So you saw that this was a little bit different from the first episode. But that is because Scotty by Nature TV does focus on reality TV. So we wanted to stay in that rap reality TV realm. All right. So listen, y'all, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Okay. And comment. Let us know how you feel about this episode down in the comment section below. And with that being said, y'all, peace.